jogging, running really slow, recovery, it's fantastic, but it's easy. Running's not easy. Running steadier is tough. If you want to learn how to be a bit tougher, how to get a bit stronger, how to benefit from steady running, and how to improve your race results, keep watching. This is a no-nonsense video, no fancy transitions, no trick photography, just information on how you could be better at running by using steady running. Everybody can jog, everybody can run super easy, not everybody wants to run hard. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Beyond measure. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Last night I cut the light off in my bedroom, hit the switch, was in the bed before the room was dark. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Only last week I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean I make medicine sick. I'm gonna show you how great I am. This kid's gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid's gonna be somebody better than anybody ever knew. I'm gonna show you how great I am. All right, so today's video is about steady running and it's the difference between easy run, you've got easy recovery runs, you've got tempo runs, you've marathon sessions, hill training, interval training. But often people look at steady running as gray training, gray area training, this kind of stuff. But when I ran tour nine, that gray training and that sort of stuff that a lot of people think is kind of nonsense, is what we almost did every day. We didn't just run, we trained. Let's go train. Today's run for me is a steady 14K at 345 to 350 per K. That's about 20% slower than my marathon pace, 209, which is 304 per K. The reason I do this YouTube video on the run It's because how can I possibly give the best advice sitting at home? The best advice comes when I'm doing it myself, when I'm out here doing it and I remember, oh yeah, shit, it actually really helps with this. So enjoy today's video, learn as much as you can and good luck. Okay, so steady run, there's a bit more intent, there's a bit more like, Let's get this going. And it really helps the psychology learn what difficult is, what is hard. And so if you're just running easy all the time, you don't really learn. You have this like easy and then you have hard. Steady days help you realize you can actually focus, stay engaged and that like runs like this they're not that hard. They also build a really solid layer of fitness between easy recovery and hard. Fitness is a, it's a graph. You wanna push the graph to the right and you wanna push from easy recovery all the way to interval to the right. You can skip the middle bit. First reason that you should include some steady miles into your program is that it's really good for the psychology. You wanna teach your body more intensities than just easy recovery and hard. You wanna show your body that some parts in the middle, steady, they're not that hard. And that means that the brain registers that basically you don't have two gears, easy, hard. You want more gears. That's the first tip. Okay, your second tip is how you would implement steady running into your program. Take a run that you already do. 10K easy, 8K easy, Sunday long run, and add a steady portion to that run. So instead of 10K easy, week one, you could do 6K easy, 2K steady, 2K easy. Do that 2K steady about 20% slower than your marathon pace. My marathon pace is five minutes per mile. And so my steady is six minutes per mile. 
but build the volume gradually and implement it that way strategically to avoid injuries and avoid getting too tired. Okay, tip three, running technique. If all you do is jog on your easy days, then on your hard days, you go hard. On those easy jogging days, you're teaching your body bad biomechanics. You don't race with those bad biomechanics. And so those, these steady days, and so steady days are perfect for practicing better running technique. How are you carrying your arms? How's your body moving? What's your ground contact time like? And you get to think, am I moving well? When you're just jogging, doesn't help, doesn't work. It's no good. Steady days are brilliant for running technique practice. Okay, tip number four, and it's back to implementing this into your own training. What you wanna do is make sure after a hard day, you always have an easy run or an easy training session. That could be in the morning, directly after a hard day, or it could be a full day dedicated to easy recovery. But then that evening, or perhaps the next day, you can add in your steadier day. So still make sure you're recovering. You're taking your recovery seriously after that harder session. But remember the next day, or perhaps even that evening, it's okay to add in steady. But be calculated. Don't go from 10K easy to 10K steady. Remember that gradual increase. Okay, tip number five, mental resilience and mental strength. When I look at the training plan and I see steady day, I almost go, ah, oh, I didn't bring the drone today because I know that for steady, I know that on a steady day, I need to concentrate. I don't have time for stopping and putting the drone up. Today's training, it's not just running. This is building mental toughness, mental strength. It's a decision to commit to your training and get on with it. Work that bit harder. Don't be surprised after your first few steady runs that you're really tired mentally because you have to focus. When I ran 209, we would show up to runs. There'd be groups of people, be myself, Andrew Butchard, Mo Farah, Bashir Abde. We'd see these other guys and they'd be getting ready to go for the run. But we knew they'll not run with us, they'll jog. And I'm not trying to offend or upset anybody. It's just how it was. We didn't jog, we ran. And it was a mental decision to commit to your training, to really give it a go. Sure, there was increased risk, injury, etc. But actually, my body feels better after steady runs because my running technique is more efficient. But that adds to that mental strength and toughness. You don't need to jog. Anybody can jog. Not everybody runs. Butchie would come to Flagstaff. Butchie's an Olympic finalist, a world finalist. He'd come to Flagstaff. There'd be a group of 60 people going for a run. And Butchie would start, seven minute pace, 7.30 pace, and Butchie would just go, fuck this, and off he'd go. And I always watched him and thought, that's why. That's why he's an Olympic finalist, a world finalist. He doesn't cave to peer pressure. He knows his mission, and off he goes, runs steady. Okay, tip number six. What you wanna do before you go out the door, do a little activation routine. 
because you're not only jogging you're running a bit faster make sure your muscles are warm switched on and ready to go follow the little activation routine if you go to joggingroom.com there's a free activation program on there but get the muscles and the psychology ready you ain't just jogging today you're running okay tip seven how does steady running help your endurance your running the way fitness works if you ever do a fitness test you, you move from slow speeds to fast speeds and as you move along it gradually gets harder and harder what you're trying to do what you're trying to do is make how difficult it is to run at those speeds along the graph eight minutes per k seven minutes per k six minutes per k you're trying to push the graph to the right so that gradually what is currently hard eventually becomes easy if you only train at the start of the graph easy and then at the end of the graph hard you never push that curve along in its best way okay tip number eight and we're back to implementation if you're going to implement some steady running you must be willing to implement a recovery strategy after the run bit of foam rolling bit of self massage if you don't know a lot about those there is other videos on youtube or go to joggingroom.com there's free video tutorials self massage foam rolling if you want to train like an animal and you want to commit to your training you have to commit to good recovery Tip nine, discipline. On the run, don't turn it into a tempo. Don't turn it into a marathon effort. Enjoy the middle ground. It's not easy. It's not super hard. But don't turn it into a hard day and see if you can really practice discipline. 20% slower, slow it down. It's not marathon pace. It's not recovery it's in the middle but be disciplined enough not to push too hard or you turn it into something it's not okay your final tip today is no super shoes pick a somewhat challenging route you don't have to go somewhere super quick Pick a challenging, no super shoes, and that'll really help with your mental toughness. That you don't need an advantage for this day. You don't need the fastest course you can possibly find. And it also builds strength in the muscles by perhaps running on ruddy surfaces, not perfect. It's gonna be really good for your balance, really good for leg strength. Get yourself on grass, cross-country type style but it also means when you get the race day you put on those super shoes when you put on those super shoes on race day and you're on that fast tarmac then you're ready to roll if you go to the fast tarmac on your steady day with super shoes on it's not going to help you when I ran 209, I didn't wear super shoes at all in that build up until the final few weeks. And that's why my legs were two monsters on race day and they were ready to go. Okay guys, so I hope you gained something insightful out of today's video log and tips on steady running. Before I ran 209, we would run 30k 30 to 35k no super shoes at altitude around a pretty tough lake it's not super hilly but the grounds like this 
And so it got me thinking, I was tough. We would do 30 to 35K at 320 per K at altitude without those super shoes, not on perfect tarmac. So of course, when you fly back to London and it's sea level and it's a fast course and you put the super shoes on, you have somewhere to go. What's happening at the moment, people are even wearing the super shoes on easy days. And so when you go stand on a start line, you have nothing to gain. Start to implement these steady days, start to include them into your training. I have 4K to go. I'm at 3.50 pace, it's hot, I'm in Hawaii, it's humid, but I know I'm building good strength, good mental toughness, and hopefully this video is also helping people, so it was worth it. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Beyond measure. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Last night I cut the light off in my bedroom, hit the switch, was in the bed before the room was dark. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Only last week I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean I make medicine sick. I'm gonna show you how great I am. This kid's gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid's gonna be somebody better than anybody ever knew. I'm gonna show you how great I am.